What's up guys and welcome back to the channel. Today I'm down at Maserati Lotus Greenville and behind me we're going to take a look at this 2019 Maserati Ghibli SQ4. Huge thanks to them for providing this sedan for me today. I'll have all their information in the description below. This model is finished off in Nero Rebelle and has an MSRP just under $98,000. Under the hood is a 3 liter twin turbocharged V6. This is only paired to the ZF 8 speed automatic transmission with column mounted paddle shifters. This engine produces 424 horsepower at 5700 RPM and 428 pound feet of torque as low as 1700 RPM. It is all wheel drive, weighs around 4100 pounds. 0 to 60 can happen in 4.7 seconds. It has a top speed of 178 miles an hour. And with a fuel capacity of 21.1 gallons, you can expect to see 16 miles per gallon in the city and 24 on the highway. The wheelbase measures 118 inches. It has an overall length of 195.7. The width is 76.6 and it has a height of 57.5 inches. Starting up front with the massive grille, you can see there are 10 vertical slots finished off in chrome, along with the Maserati Trident badge right in the center. Just above that, there's a forward-facing camera, and you can see how much airflow this will provide to cool the engine. This has LED headlights and LED daytime running lights. There's four forward-facing sensors in the bumper, along with two in the lower section of the bumper. It's also finished off in more mesh. There's a nice front lip giving it an aggressive look, and as we make our way up to the hood, there's very clean lines running throughout it, along with more contoured lines above the fender arches. Moving to the side, this features 20 by 8.5 inch wheels up front and 20 by 10.5 in the rear. They have a nice 7 double spoke design to them along with a two tone finish. Four wheel disc brakes are in all four corners. This also has an adaptive suspension. There's functional air vents just behind the front tire. As we make our way to the power folding side mirrors, they have the integrated turn signal along with a camera underneath each one as part of the surround view camera system. There's more chrome trim around the windows. It's on the door handles along with the Maserati Trident logo on the C-pillar. And then up on top, this does have a sunroof. And finishing up in the rear with a small trunk lip spoiler, this has LED tail lights, a backup camera with four parking sensors, it does have a power trunk, there's rear facing fog lights, and down below is the quad tip dual exhaust. So that is going to finish up with the exterior walk around on the 2019 Maserati Ghibli SQ4. Comment down below, what are your thoughts on this sedan? I think this is an understated sedan because it has a lot to offer as you'll see once we get on the inside. But on the exterior, it has nice and sleek elegant lines running down the sides. But then once you come up front, it has this massive grille. Gives it a very aggressive appearance. But as we make our way to the interior, as long as the vehicle is locked, it does have remote start. So if we just double tap that button on the key fob, it will automatically start up. And then obviously if you just double tap it, it will shut off. But with the key on me, as long as I place my hand in the door handle, you'll hear it automatically unlock. The door panels finish off in very nice black leather. It has a combination of red stitching, which you can see on the top, and the armrest, along with silver stitching on the back side. There's a wood trim and brushed aluminum trim piece running on the top. It's on the release handle. You have your memory seat adjustments just in front of that. This does have a 10 speaker Harman Kardon sound system. You have a little bit of storage space behind that. And then up top, all of the windows are automatic up and down. You also have your power side mirror adjustments as well. Moving inside now, we'll take a look at the black leather seats. You can see more red stitching along with the red Maserati logo. Gives it a really nice touch. It also runs throughout the center portion of the seat as well. Really good bolstering support to them. They are heated and ventilated and also feature a 12-way power adjustability with lumbar support. Once inside, we're greeted with a fully wrapped black leather steering wheel. It has really good notches on each side for good grip. There's black stitching running along the inside. And then if we take a look at the outside of the steering wheel, it has a nice wood trim piece surrounding it. Gives it a really nice touch. There's also a nice chrome trim piece running down the middle section of it. On the right side, you have all of your Bluetooth and voice command controls, along with a scrolling dial for the center gauge setup, which I'll get to here soon. On the left side, you have your cruise and adaptive cruise, along with a highway assist button. And then again, this has the column mounted paddle shifters. They are quite large, finished off in more of the brushed aluminum, and you have easy access to them behind the steering wheel. So looking at the gauge cluster now, you'll see the speedometer on the far left. You have your tack on the right. Right in the middle is your fuel gauge along with your engine temperature. You can see what gear you're in along with the odometer. And then using those buttons on the right side of the steering wheel, we'll take a look at your vehicle information. So you have your tire pressure, your maintenance, your battery voltage, and other vital information like that. We can scroll down to drive modes. You have your driver assist, so basically controlling your adaptive cruise. We can go down to view your fuel economy along with your trip A and trip B. 
This does have the engine start stop feature. You can look at your music along with any stored messages and then going into your vehicle settings, you have adjustments like your screen setup, your speed warning and your e-brake. To the left of the steering wheel, we have all the headlight controls along with some dimmer switches for the gauge setup. At the very bottom is a nice little cubby storage pocket. And then above that, we have the engine start stop button. So with my foot on the brake, we'll go ahead and start it up. Just above all those buttons, there's one more air vent. The entire dash is covered in leather along with more of the red stitching. There's one speaker up top along with a digital clock. And then below that is the 8.4 inch screen. At the bottom is basically all of your presets. So you can see we're on the radio right now. We can go into media. You have all of your controls for all of the technology offered in the Ghibli. We have lane keeping assist, active blind spot monitoring, your forward collision, traffic signs, along with visual and haptic feedback. You can also control the strength and sensitivity of each one, very easy to go through. You can turn this screen off if you'd like. You have your engine start stop feature along with the rear sunshade. You have your automatic high beam assist along with the surround view camera. So looking at the left side, you have your top down view. Right now we're looking at a standard rear view angle. You have a rear wide view angle. We can go to the front camera that also has a wide angle or the standard front camera with the top down view. And the lines do change on both screens, which is nice to see. Right in the middle is the Maserati logo. If we just click on that, you can control your ventilated and heated seats for both driver and passenger. We can look at the navigation and view that so you can see the screen there. This also has a heated steering wheel and then if we go over again you can see the ventilated for the passenger seat and you have some other controls which you just saw. To the right of that we have all the climate controls. This does have a dual zone climate system up front. You have the heated steering wheel again right in the center along with the fan speed down below. You can just click on a number that you would like or the fan itself to turn that on or off. You have where you'd like the air to go for driver and passenger just by clicking on these arrows and some more buttons to the top. To each side of that screen, we have an air vent with more of the brushed aluminum, gives it a really nice look. And then down below, we have physical AC buttons. So you can see the fan speed right in the center. You have where you'd like the air to go around that along with the temperature. And it will appear a little screen up top so that way you know what temperature you're setting it at. Right in the center, we have a nice wood trim piece surrounding everything. It has a really nice design to it. There's two cup holders on the right side of the leather wrap shifter, and then some buttons on the left side, which I'll get to here shortly. Just pulling the trigger on the shifter, we can go all the way up into reverse. And again, you'll see that view up here. We can pull it all the way back into drive. If we pop it over into manual mode, we can use the shifter itself, or again, the column mounted shifters, which are quite large, have a really nice feel to them. And to put it into park, we can either put it back into drive or in manual mode. If you just push P on top, it'll automatically switch over. On the left side of the shifter, we have traction control. You have the engine start stop feature. There's an ice mode and a sport mode. As you heard, the sport mode will change the note of the exhaust, making it much deeper and aggressive. Just behind that, we have the electronic parking brake and then some dials for the center screen. You have a back button and a home button and then two rotary dials, one on the bottom and one on the top. The one on the top will control the radio volume and the one on the bottom will allow you to go between different settings that you'd like to see. Just behind all of that, you have a cubby storage spot here. Finish off with more of the wood trim. If we just push on that, it will open up. So you have a little bit of storage there. And then looking at the center console, it does have the split design down the middle. And just pushing this button on the top will open up both sides. You have two more cup holders down there along with a 12 volt. And then you can close these individually, of course. Moving over to the glove box, you have nice brushed aluminum on the release handle itself. You do have a top section and a bottom section, so it gives you plenty of room for everything that needs to go in there. We'll take another look at these leather seats with the red accents. It definitely gives it a really cool look. And then up top, we do have the sunshade again, along with the sunroof. You have all those controls up here, along with the power trunk, your dome light switches, you have the parking sensors and some garage door buttons. Now it's time to take a look at the rear seating and the door panels finished off just like up front. You get more of that red stitching and the gray stitching running in the black leather along with more of the wood trim and brushed aluminum. Has a really nice look to it. A little bit of storage space behind the speaker there. This is a five seater sedan so let's go ahead and hop in. Behind both front seats you have some netting for extra storage space. 
There's two air vents in the center, along with heated passenger seats. So you have two settings for each side, and then you can control the rear sunshade as well. So just by clicking on both of these buttons, you can put it up or down. Talking about legroom now, I do have the front seat set at my height, 5'10". And you can see I can put my feet up underneath the seat. I have about two or three inches in front of my knees and then two or three above my head. So it's not really crammed in the back seats. You do have plenty of room. They are very comfortable seats too. You can see they have kind of mini bolsters to them. So they sink in just a little bit to hug you nicely. If we pull down the center armrest here, you'll see you have two cup holders along with a little bit of storage in the back side there, which is nice to see. We'll take a look out of the rear glass here for the visibility. The back seats also have a 60-40 split to them, so if you just pull on this tab right here on the driver or passenger side, we can go ahead and fold that down, and you can see how much room you have into the back area there. And last up, moving on to the rear trunk storage space, I can just double tap the button on the key fob or walk up to the back of the trunk. There's about 17 cubic feet of storage space with the back seats up. And obviously with them down, you have plenty of room for anything that can slide through. You can see on the right side, there's a net, so you can place anything here that you'd like, along with a 12 volt. And then we'll just take another look at all the storage space you have. Definitely a lot of room for a five seater. And then up top on the power trunk, we can either close it or close and lock it at the same time. All right, so getting the Ghibli SQ4 out on the road now, the first thing that I wanna do is go ahead and put it into sport mode. We'll pop it over into manual mode, that way we can use the paddle shifters here. Man, Maseratis have such a good exhaust note to them. They sound incredibly good, and I like the option that you can go between sport mode. I'm not sure if you can hear that now, but then it just completely goes away. It's very well insulated on the inside too, but once you put it into sport mode, you can definitely hear that exhaust. It's not obnoxiously loud in sport mode. It just has a nice deep tone to it. It's what you would expect. From a twin turbo V6. So popping it back into normal automatic mode, we're gonna take it out of sport mode. Just give it a little bit of gas to see how it performs by itself here. Ooh, you can still hear a little pop, a little crackle in that exhaust. But now moving on to the general visibility. For a sedan like this, it's very easy to see all around, looking over your left and right shoulder. These C pillars back there are not too bulky, so it gives you easy view over both shoulders. And then I like how the back glass from the inside, you can see it curve just a little bit, giving you plenty of visibility over all of the, the headrests there, so that way you can easily see behind you. A quick glance like that, I was easily able to see. But moving on to the handling, coming around this turn, downshift a little bit, give it a little bit of gas out of the turn. Wow, it is, it's super planted. It's such a fun car to drive. I like all the notches on the steering wheel too. It gives you a good grip. So if you're on some back twisty roads, you definitely have a good grip. You don't have any interruptions with your turn signal stock. That stock is a little bit longer than the paddle shifter itself. So I can easily put on my blinkers and downshift at the same time. There's no confusion with being able to reach that. I love having column mounted paddle shifters. It just makes the driving experience to me much better, I think, than just having them on the steering wheel. So I really like how Maserati has made column mounted. Coming around that same turn the other way now, man, you can barely feel any of the body roll. It's very well planted. It's such a fun car to drive. I could see this being a good daily driver. It's a sedan, so you have plenty of room for other people in the car. And again, you can take this out on some twisty roads and have a ball with it. Put it in sport mode if you want. You do have ice mode as well. So with the all wheel drive system, it makes it a lot more versatile in what weather you can drive the car in. Now talking about the comfort of this car, since I've put a couple miles on it so far, I really like how it is to drive. We went over the handling already. Seats are super comfortable. I like the bolstering support they have to them. And it's been a really smooth ride so far. I have no complaints going over a bump like this. 
it absorbs it very well. Moving on to all the interior materials. This is the second Maserati that I've driven today. If you haven't seen the review on the Levante S, that will be in the description below. All the materials on the inside are very similar to that SUV along with all of the other Maseratis. They have a really nice premium feeling interior. What I like the most about the interior is all the leather everywhere has a really nice feel to it. All the stitching is laid out well. You have small attention to details like the wood trim that goes around the steering wheel. It took me a while to even spot that. From the driver's seat, you can't see it, but it's a very nice touch to see when you're entering the vehicle. You have wood trim and brushed aluminum on the door. It's on the paddle shifters. Very nice leather on the seats and even more wood down in the center. So it has a really nicely laid out interior as far as materials go. And then just talking about the overall layout of the center, you don't have a whole lot of buttons, which is nice to see. I like how everything is nicely integrated into the screen. And then down below, all you have is all the AC controls. I know I've said this in previous videos with vehicles that have physical AC control buttons, but it's a really nice feature to see. So that is gonna wrap up my walk around review and test drive in the 2019 Maserati Ghibli SQ4. Once again, huge thanks to Maserati Lotus Greenville for providing this vehicle for me today. If you'd like to see more of their inventory, check out their website. That is in the description below. And if you enjoyed today's video, make sure you give it a thumbs up, smash that subscribe button. I'll see you guys in the next video.